Good morning to all of you. Our today's subject is on <coughs> Endowments Act. So, you might have seen in the press that Shri Ashok Gajpati Razu, former minister of uh, AP government, he has filed a petition in the Honorable AP High Court against the orders removing him from the trusteeship of Ramatitham Temple for his alleged failure to ensure the safety measures in the 400 year old temple for which he is the trustee. Keep him knowing on 30th, 30, 12, 2020, <coughs> an incident happened in Ramatidham, which is about 12 kilometers from Vijayanagaram. And this is an age old temple, 400 years age old temple, where the idol of Lord Rama was desecrated, actually, but cut. Of course, very recently, the government has once again reinstated the idol. <clears throat> in this connection, we have to know that Sri Ashokajbhad Raju, he belongs to Vijayanagara Empire and he is the trustee or founder family member or chairman of uh, three temples. The very famous one, of course, since it is coming to the notice, is the Ramadhyatham Temple. Second is very famous uh, Paidi Ammathalli. Paidi Ammathalli is very famous in Vijayanagara, uh, Vijayanagara town itself. Third one is Mandapalli, that is Ishtudavari district, uh, where uh, the famous Lord Shanishwara temple is located. Alright, so the incident of desecration of Lord Rama idol in Ramatirtham temple definitely it has attracted the uh, attention of the entire nation. Of course, there was commotion in the state, particularly from the opposition parties. And even Jansena leader, Pavan Kalyan, he has commented that uh, while the BJP is constructing uh, Rama Mandir in Ayodhya, people are uh, desecrating Rama idol in Andhra Pradesh. What is this? Some enquiry has to up. Of course, as an uh, opposition leader, people will be commenting like that only. <coughs> Ultimately, in the first week of January, the government of Andhra Pradesh, using the powers of uh, EAP, Hindu and Religious Institutions and Endowments Act 1987. So, using powers under section 28, clause 2 of the said act, they have removed Ashok Gajpat Raju from the trusteeship. Of course, it has also, it was also subject to a lot of criticism. Already previously in that Vishaka Simhacharam temple, when Sanchaita Raju, when she was appointed, also there was a lot of adverse criticism. Of course, it is a political issue. Now, since uh, he failed to take uh, the safety measures, since he failed to take the safety measures, uh, he was removed from the three posts. Three posts, already I told you. So, what they said is, according to section 28, class 2, the executive officer, of course, the commission is competent. He has alleged that Ashok Gadbad Raju failed to discharge his legitimate functions and also he did not adhere to the issues related to the safety of the temple. That means he did not make any attempt to install the so called CCTV cameras or to putting a watchman to the temple, all these things that they have discussed. Anyway, so instead of giving a GO, actually they have given a memo and they have not followed the principles of natural justice. Right. Ultimately, he moved the High Court and the High Court, uh, AP High Court, uh, accepted with the contention of Ashok Gajpat Raju and held that according to section 29 of the same act, the executive officer or the assistant commissioner of endowments or the commissioner, they are the custodians of the temple and not the trustee. So, he is, the suspension is uh, illegal. Therefore, the Honorable High Court has set aside uh, the so-called removal of uh, Ashok Gajpat Raju as the chairman or trustee or family, founder family member of the three temples which I have told you. 
right now let us now go to the sections of law that is more important so please remember it's a very good act because a separate tribunal will be there for endowments you cannot file a civil case only you have to go to the high court that's all <coughs> right here uh, it is containing about 196 sections right section 23 deals about the trustee duties of the trustee so the duties of a trustee is he shall administer the uh, temple and it's uh, he has to manage uh, the affair of the properties uh, and uh, must he must use uh, he must act as a man of ordinary prudence and he fails to do then section 28 clause 2 section 28 clause 2 also specifically says either the suspension or removal or dismissal of a trustee depends on uh, five circumstances number one if he fails to discharge the duties and functions of a trustee so this they have taken into consideration then second is if he disobeys any lawful orders of the executive officer if they cannot place much attention on this and if he disobeys uh, if he refuses if he refuses or delays uh, to hand over any property as required by the commissioner fourth if he does any act which leads to breach of trust yes, or misappropriation so swindling away the monies of the temple lastly when he does not profess the hindu religion or uh, when he does not uh, when he goes against the so called it happens in tirupati tirupati it happened i believe but whatever it is if he does not have profess if he does not profess the hindu religion then definitely he can be removed but uh, what are these conditions what is his duty so he cannot go to the temple and he cannot ever sit at the temple he cannot be a watchman of course, he has to check. So, when an executive officer is there, he is the now section 29. Section 29 says uh, EO or the commissioner or the assistant commissioner, they are the custodians of the temple. They, along with uh, the Akash, uh, list, uh, after them only the trustee comes. Trustees only by virtue of the family members, by virtue of his father or age old uh, generations back, uh, they might have donated the property. That's all. So, regular affairs of the temple will be looked after by the trustee, if he, by the executive officer, if he is appointed. So, now the Honorable High Court has assessed that uh, it is the duty of the executive officer look to arrange the security or look into all these affairs, but he cannot throw any the burden on the, tr on the trustee and remove him from the discharge or from the uh, so called trusteeship or chairmanship. At the same time, the principles of natural justice were also not followed. Suppose if he wants to remove him, definitely they have to give him a show cause notice and he has to give the reply. His explanation has to be taken, then only the action has to be taken. Without doing all this, simply they have given a memo stating that since he failed to um, discharge his left shield, left shield legislate. Uh, <coughs> designated duties, uh, legitimate duties uh, is uh, removed. What is this? So, I could. That's why please remember, whenever principles of natural justice are not followed, we can raise this topic as an advocate. So, for that point only, I have made this video. Definitely, it will be useful to you. Of course, since it is a political issue, let us not go into the political, mix it. But I have to tell, so only that part of politics only I touched, other things are legal, let us confine to the legal things. Thank you very much.